Hi everyone, it's Michael, and I wanted to take a moment to share a giant discovery that I've just made. And this is probably the biggest mistake I've made as an orchid grower in the past year, and possibly ever since I started growing semi-hydroponically. And that is not properly leaching out mineral content from brand new LECA or Hydratin. Now, I'm going to elaborate on what I mean by that. Now, about two years ago, I posted a video, which I will link below, called Properly Cleaning Growing Media. And in that video, I showcase how you boil LECA to encourage the mineral content inside to kind of dissolve and leach out. It is also phenomenal for killing microorganisms or any bacteria. So that was my game plan. So anytime I got a new bag of LECA, what I would do is I would just boil it and then I would use it immediately to pot up my plants. And this was a huge oversight because the mineral content in the LECA was never fully resolved. So what needed to happen was it needed to be properly soaked in a very, very low to zero TDS water to allow all of that mineral content to come out. Now, I really want to showcase exactly what I'm talking about because I got a comment from, um, I believe the account was plants and other things. Thank you so much. That comment really sent me on this entire spiral of um, researching and looking more critically at my choices but I started looking at the TDS inside of these orchid containers and I was horrified to discover how elevated it was. And I have a video that I wanna show right here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, friends, so I just wanted to show you just how terrible this can get. This TDS meter is at zero, and this is one of my plants that has been really, really struggling. It's an Oncidium type. It's my Wild Willy Pacific Bingo. Now, when I check the TDS of this, it's going to be really, really surprising to you. It's in excess of over 333 ppm. Now I know a lot of it is centralized sodiums at the very top of the container, but still that is way, way too high. It's no wonder that this has been struggling to succeed at putting down a new growth. It's because it's just being poisoned with way, way too much mineral content. So this is very, very telling. Now as unsettling as discoveries of this nature can be, it is also incredibly exciting and very empowering because there are so many orchids in my collection that have continued to struggle no matter what changes I've provided them. So whether I add a top layer of sphagnum moss, remove a top layer of sphagnum moss, use slow release fertilizer, take away slow release fertilizer, flush more regularly, uh, use very high mineral, whatever I'm doing, it just doesn't seem to be impacting certain plants. Like my zygonesia, like my zygopedlum, like some of my oncidium types, some of them have just completely halted. And it's especially frustrating for me because some of the plants that have halted were ones that were doing phenomenally well for me in Colorado. But again, in Colorado, the water quality is so, so much better that I think that when I just did a superficial rinse of my LECA, it was still so much better than what happens here in Los Angeles because the starting point of my tap water is super, super elevated here. So for the past two weeks, I have been experimenting with soaking this bucket of LECA and I have dumped out the water. Don't worry, I'm not wasting it. I use that dumped out water to water all of my other house plants. Um, but I dump the water and then I refresh with more reverse osmosis water. And I am systematically watching the TDS of that LECA drop significantly. So from a brand new batch of LECA, it can be anywhere upwards of 200 TDS. And then where I have it now is coming down to around, I don't know, like 20 to 30, which is a much better starting point, a much healthier starting point for the containers of my orchids. So let's go ahead and look at that. I want to show you that LECA and see exactly where it is right now. So this is the bucket of LECA I have been soaking for the past two weeks. So let's take a look at the starting PPM. Oh, zero. Let's go ahead and test it. So we are at a PPM of around 36, 37. Now you can see that that is infinitely preferable to what we just witnessed with that poor, poor Oncidium struggling against a TDS of over 300. Now imagine if I had never gone through this process, which I hadn't done before for most of my orchids, um, that plant would just struggle against that high mineral content for the entirety of its time in that container. So this is why it is so imperative. So as you can see, LECA that has been treated in that way has a much healthier starting point for orchids to have a healthy life. Now, just to give you a counter perspective, I want to show you exactly what it looks like when I take brand new LECA and begin that process of soaking so you can see just how elevated the TDS is. So just to give you a counter perspective, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this brand new bag of Hydratin, I'm going to put it in the strainer and I'm going to rinse it with tap water because that's precisely what I've been doing up until this point. Then I'm going to put it in a bucket with reverse osmosis water and we're going to measure the TDS just so you can see how poorly set up for success these plants have been. So here is that brand new bucket of Hydratin. I just began soaking it. So let's go ahead and check the TDS starting with a PPM of zero. We are at... 107 almost okay yeah over 180 so even though that might be the sweet spot for when i feed my orchids it is certainly not what i want it to start at in the container because it's going to get over inundated with mineral content 
So having seen that, some of you might think to yourself, well, you know, 200, 180, it's really not that high. But when you compound it with fertilizer or nutrient solution, you realize, wow, you can really spiral out of control super quickly. And I think that's precisely what's happening for a lot of my plants. So that really implies, do I need to unpot all of my plants and start over? And I don't want to do that. There are some key offenders that really, really need to be repotted, like my zygopedlum, like my zygonesia. But um, I am actually going to try this experimental thing with actually soaking them inside of their orchid growing containers. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. I've just gone ahead and covered up my drainage holes with some good old fashioned painter's tape. And I have filled it with reverse osmosis water to allow that LECA to soak inside of the container. Basically, I'm mimicking precisely what I'm doing inside of that soaking bucket, but I'm just doing it in the context of this actual container. So in theory, this should allow the LECA at the top to really have any sodium, any minerals to dissolve and leach out and then be flushed through the drainage holes. Now you might be asking yourself, well, don't you do that every single time you flush? Kind of yes and kind of no. Again, you have to remember that because of the wicking properties of LECA, anything that exists is constantly being carried to the top. And even though the water, reverse osmosis, distilled or otherwise, makes momentary contact with the LECA at the top, it doesn't really stay there to allow the LECA to fully leach. So I'm hoping by virtue of doing this, I can actually impact the excessive TDS in the container without unpotting the plants. I will absolutely keep you posted on how this unfolds. So having said all of that, I just wanted to showcase this to you immediately. As I get more familiar with what I can and cannot do to resolve this issue, I will make more formal videos, but I needed to notify you immediately because this was such, it's so funny because these things are such no brainers. And when somebody calls your attention to them, you're like, oh my gosh, how did I ever not even think about that? Um, so I'm very excited because I think a lot of my plants are going to do much better. Plants like my Phragmopediums, which have always struggled. Plants that I've always just really not done well with because I think I have been suffocating them with insane TDS. Now it's making me second guess even my Bulbophyllums. They're doing amazingly now in basket culture, but I can't help but wonder if I had properly soaked and leached out mineral content from the LECA in the first place, would they have done well in semi-hydroponics? This is gonna make me revisit everything I've been doing up until this point. So I just felt very, very compelled to share with you. So that's pretty much it. As always, thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. Don't forget to support each other in the comments section because I am so seldom available to do so. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah! Bye guys.